live as live can get today. Mark Davis is our first guest out of the gate. Mark, how are you, my friend? I'm very good. Thank you for having me on your show. It's my privilege. Now, uh, Mark, you are you are fantastic, and uh, I wanted to get you on today to talk about a series of subjects. But uh, first of all, uh, as we always do, we always try to give a little bit of background on our guests. Uh, give us a brief introduction on yourself, my friend. I am a person who was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. President was in Maryland. I went to medical school at the State University of New York in in Syracuse. I am in practice medicine for 30 years, stepped aside to do some writing. I've written a book called Obamacare, Dead on Arrival, a Prescription for Disaster. It's based on many elements in my past experiences, including owning and operating health care facilities, uh, lo lobbying for health care for patient uh, quality. I've done that. I practice medicine, internal medicine. I see how the government inter reacts with health care facilities because I've owned and operated them. Yep. Uh, and I'm here today to talk about my book, which is phase two of Obamacare. It has the implementation of the regulatory structure of the Obamacare uh, nightmare that's coming forward. And that, that's me in a nutshell. Well, it, you, you've, got a, you've got a great background here. You're, you're a well-spoken individual. You're a well-read individual. The, the book is absolutely amazing. Let's talk about Obamacare, Dead on Arrival, Prescription for Disaster. What was the writing process like for you for this great book? It, this book was developed over approximately one year. It's up, it's up to date, very up to date, in fact. Uh, I basically take the person reading the book through the medical school, how people get their medical degrees, uh, and I move them right through the system. It analyzes and subjects people to, to the horrors of what will come if rationing of care is implemented, which it seems is coming down the pike. It talks about everything from the so-called death panels, which are not there, but there are things similar to it, to legislative efforts by people to get rid of this horrific nightmare that's coming down the pike. The media in general has been discussing the shoreline, not the tidal wave coming of Obamacare. The yeah. tidal wave is how they're going to regulate almost 6,000 registered hospitals, 900,000 physicians, tens of thousands of doctor's offices, thousands of freestanding clinics, 3 million nurses, a million auxiliary people that support the system, the cement of the system, and it's almost impossible under the law which has been written to do any of this. So it was a very difficult right. Uh, I'm a physician. I'm trained in multiple subjects as well, including the law. I'm not a lawyer by any stretch of the imagination, but I am trained in the law, and I could see things from different angles, and when I was falling down on the subject, I consulted people, so other people consulted uh, to help implement this book, and the book is thorough. It's an easy read for people and they'll learn a lot. It's like a text, but in normal writing. Uh, so that's what I, I would suggest people get the book. The cover itself was ingenious design from a commercial conservative artist. It shows a cemetery with headstones stating uh, victims of Obamacare on it, and it's exactly what it's going to do. There'll be many, many victims of Obamacare, and we've already seen several since the in implementation of Phase 2, January 1, 2014. Uh, which we could discuss if you'd like. Yes, go go ahead and uh, jump in there. What what are some well, of the uh, some of the things we've heard? Kettering. Sloan Kettering, as many people may know, is a cancer hospital in New York. A woman's breast cancer uh, was spreading. She was diagnosed very very quickly. She was about to have surgery. Found out that her doctors, her personal doctors, are not covered under Obamacare. The surgery has been delayed. I don't know if she's had it yet. There's another case already on the news about orthopedic uh, a similar. Her doctor wasn't covered. They had to delay the surgery. So we're going to see delays in the surgery. We're going to see prevention of the surgery. We're only at, at the very edge of the implementation. Once we need permission from some bureaucrat in Washington to get a surgery, a common surgery, that's going to be a real tickle. Uh, they, they may take months to get those kind of requests through the process, and that's what the nightmare is about. You're going to get less care. Uh, it's going to cost you a lot more, and the access to the therapeutics diagnostics will be reduced for you because many new people will be admitted to the system and there's not enough people to take care of, of everybody. People have to remember there's 900,000 doctors but two-thirds of them practice direct patient care. The rest do administrative work, work for insurance companies, bureaucracies, so forth. So we're it and uh, unless we have some new vast group of doctors coming into this country or being exited from medical schools, there's just not enough people to do the job that is intended for Obamacare. 
Mark Davis joins us today. He's a health care expert, author of Obamacare Dead on Arrival. Uh, Obamacare and all its inconsistencies and flaws, let, let's talk about this. Well, what are some of the things that you've seen uh, as it relates to, uh, to Obamacare and some of the uh, flaws and inconsistencies here, my friend? Well, basically, this, the algorithm, the very formula of Obamacare is flawed. It's, it's a Ponzi scheme. Everybody remembers Madoff. This is ten times worse. Ponzi scheme meaning there's a number of people have to pay in at the one side so other people could take it out at the other side. Obamacare specifically requires young people, people in their 20s or 30s, to buy into the system uh, enough insurance so they can support people in my age group, let's say, in their 50s and above. That, that would be the Ponzi scheme that we're seeing. Eventually, the system runs out of money because there's not enough people at one end to pay for the other end. So at this point in time, the country has an exchange that's not working properly, no matter what the government is telling you. They had three and a half years to implement phase one, the exchanges. They failed. There are 16 state exchanges at this point. They're failing. The one here in Maryland, I'm definitely original from New York, not from here. Uh, I can tell you there's a lot of flaws in the system here, $100 million to put the Maryland system in, and it doesn't work right. And that's what we're seeing around the country. This Maryland reflects what we're seeing on a national level as well. So that, that part of it, you believe you're going to be covered for pre-existing conditions, they simply don't write it in the policy. It doesn't matter what the government says. There are ways around getting your pre-existing conditions covered in um, Obamacare or the Patient Affordability Act, and people don't realize it. It's a tiered system. It was sold to us that everybody would have equal health care, but the system allows for a tiered system from a Cadillac down to a bronze plant. And so you'll have a tiered system just like we have now in traditional insurance. Traditional insurance, by and large, was covering approximately 85% of the country. That included groups in medical assistance, Medicare, and other things. A lot of states channel their medical systems to private insurance companies, and they, they delegate what, what the money the physicians in the hospital are going to get. There was a 15% approximately number of people that were not covered, didn't want to be covered for whatever reason. They should have sent it on those 15% of the people, not change the 85% who are maybe satisfied with their programs already. A lot of the people that have already signed up for the exchanges are medical assistance people, people who are getting freebies from the government for whatever reason. You could argue that, but for whatever reason, they're getting... Uh, money now from the government to be on the exchanges. So they exchange one freebie for another freebie. So when they say there's three million people on the exchanges, half of those people are already on the system. So these people are not really paying in, so the Ponzi scheme is already failing at that point. Ezekiel Emanuel, you remember that name, Ron Emanuel? Yes, indeed. The mayor of Chicago was one of the architects of this uh, Obamacare, and he says that we need those young people in the system or the system won't work. I've heard him twice say this in interviews. I never interviewed him myself, though. Mark Davis joins us today here on the broadcast, coast-to-coast coast and border-to-border border all over the World Wide Web and on 50-plus stations across the U.S. and Canada. And, uh, Mark, the, the, the book is absolutely, absolutely fascinating. Uh, what's been some of the feedback you've gotten on the book so far? The left hate it. And the left, they, they haven't said it in my life yet, but... Uh, very close to it. They don't like the cover. They don't like the content. It reveals the truth. It goes deep into the Obamacare bills. It's approximately 2,300 uh, typewritten pages, the uh, legislative effort that they put out. Remember, this was passed um, March 23, 2010. We go into where the negatives are, where people need to know who's getting benefits, and most people are not getting benefits out of it. We tell people that the laws of which this thing is based on are flawed, that the Supreme Court, if the Supreme Court had to be forced to use this Obamacare, they would have they would have blocked it nine to nine, not the, not what, what we know about five to four. They allowed it to go through. That's how uh, hypocritical these people are. If the government people were supposed to use this, it would never would have passed. We don't know. We still don't know fully what's in it. Why? Because Health and Human Services has not written all the regulatory structure yet to support the 2,300 pages of Obamacare legislation. Think of Obamacare legislation as a one big law with a lot of laws under it. And it, it, it takes over from medical schools to hospitals to clinics. It tries to regulate everything, and they can't even regulate themselves, not alone to regulate health care. You saw what happened with the exchanges, a complete abomination. 
not to make a pun. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I love that. I love that. I, 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 I'll have to say, I do love all you old school New York City guys. Uh, you guys, <laughs> you, you I'm guys. Old school New York guy, a Yankee fan, up and down. <laughs> no, you guys, uh, you guys are 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 a different cut than uh, everywhere else across the country, which is a good thing. Uh, Mark Davis joins us today. He's a healthcare expert. He's also the author of Obamacare dead on arrival uh, let's talk about uh, the nutrition weight loss science and the pharmacology of weight loss here I wrote the book the millennium diet the practical guide for rapid weight loss yep I wrote it some years ago and that book goes directly into dieting what people should and should not do it was written basically by the patients themselves we analyzed the patients diets people who lost lots of weight on many different diets, people that gain weight and what they gain weight from, we synergized it down with patient help. Thousands of patients were uh, our privilege to take care of. And at the end of the day, it was a high-protein, moderate-carb, low-fat diet, approximately 1,200 calories that made people want to lose weight. And people lost lots of weight. Approximately a subset of 20% of our weight loss patients lost over 30 pounds per month in four weeks. We had a guy, a police officer, who was in congestive heart failure, his doctor nearly gave up on him. He went from 317 to 267 on this diet. No kidding. I have the medical records to prove it. But he had to come in every day to be weight. I refuse to take him on. We've treated everybody from actors and actresses, judges, common people like me. All we're using the diet. The diet works. It's an easy book to follow. I think Chapter 5 is the diet itself. And I'd recommend anybody within the sound of this to get the Millennium Diet. It's cheap. You could probably pick it up for a few bucks, probably in any bookstore or the Internet. It's on, it should be on uh, many of the electronic devices as well, PDF. The Millennium Diet tells you not to smoke. It tells you what foods to stay away from, and it, and it gives you a long list of drugs not to take if you're dieting with drugs. Many of those drugs do not work. The bottom formula is exercise, a 1,200-calorie diet that's in the book, and the uh, Rest, you need to also have your rest pretty much. So those are the basic things that people need to know to lose weight. There's no magic formula. We just had an actress come here to Baltimore, Maryland, discussing Weight Watchers, a great program. No, not knocking Weight Watchers, but I don't trust uh, celebrity spokespeople. Do not trust them because they have other <laughs> ways of losing weight as well. Do not trust them, folks. I've dealt with them directly. I know them. You're not getting what you, you think you're getting from them at yeah. all. And, and you don't have to spend a lot of money to lose weight. You don't have to buy food through the mail, dry garbage that they sell, all that. The book tells you, go to your local store, buy these foods, you lose weight, you spend pennies on the dollar. That's all. People have hard-earned money now. You don't want to waste it. Amazing stuff. Mark Davis joins us today here on the broadcast, coast-to-coast coast and border-to-border border all over AM, FM affiliates, Internet stations all over the place, and uh, we are happy that we got uh, – Mark with us today. Now, uh, what do you have any other books planned? I know that you've got... Uh, we, have, well, we have Demons of Democracy that came out a couple of years ago. That tells how lawyers and legislators are undermining the country. As we all know, Washington is imploding under its own weight. Lawyers and legislators, a subset of lawyers, not all lawyers are bad, obviously. Not all legislators are bad, of course. But the book points out who they are, how they're undermining the country. Every institution and tradition and this society is being hit very hard in the last five years. And we all know what they've been doing there. We're watching the military be uh, dissembled. We're watching religion being forced, uh, the religious tenets from the White House being forced on people that don't want to follow them, like birth control for nuns. And that's the most insane thing I've ever heard. We found the Catholic Church being forced to give up birth control when they don't want to. Uh, the government should stay out of our lives. This book tells you why they should stay out of our lives. We, tells you that they're using the Constitution as a doormat, not a road map, which it should be used. The Founding Fathers were right on cue. They knew what they were doing. We don't need any more Constitutions, like some famous authors have written. Follow the one we have, and we'll have a great society right now. And if they need to add an amendment, there's a process to get an amendment in there as well uh, to fix anything that needs to be. Term limits, for example, we need those definitely. So the book is constructed in such a way, it's a very interesting read, one chapter, let me just point out, it's called yes. Sexploitation 101. It talks about the old, not Anthony Weiner, but people like Anthony Weiner and uh, those guys who are using their pulpits to get sex from young girls. 
it's very interesting how these things are happening around Washington. People do not know. And these, the Anthony Weiner types have been around for years and years. We just hear them more because we're on the media more. But uh, th that chapter is extremely interesting. People have pointed that out. I think that's why they brought the book initially. Well, and the cover of the book, the cover, well, yes, the cover of the book has a man on fire behind. A, you see the American flag with horns, and I bet you can't guess who is on that cover. Who who knew this ahead of time? Whoever this commercial artist was, he was a, a soothsayer. Wow! It's an excellent read. I appreciate if people would buy the book. Definitely. Well, uh, we're gonna we're gonna link the books up from Amazon on our website, and people can pick those up. And uh, Mark, I definitely want to stay in touch. Keep me, keep me updated on your uh, on your next writing project, and uh, sure. we'll talk to you soon, sir. Appreciate hey, it, man. Thank you for having me on. It was my privilege and, and privilege. You have a very good day. Definitely. Thank you, Mark. We'll talk soon, sir. Thanks, bye, man. bye, sir. We've got more when we get back. Here in the world famous Chicky Chag Wire Show, coast to coast, world to world. At dollarseed.com, all of our seeds are only a dollar a pack. And we have online resources that teach you all about the rewarding hobby of growing your own plants, flowers, herbs, and vegetables. 